Hello, what is up, everybody? My name is Mario Picciardo. One of the most recent things to happen to um, men in recent time, you know, we, we talked about the suicide rate going up. Um, you know, now men are even being blamed for the fact that women don't have partners who make at least as much as they do. Yes. You see, literally anything that is potentially not good for a woman is now 100% the fault of men, according to the left. And this is like, this is what you see is that broken, broken, um, like, you now you see why I get upset. It's like all they see is victimization for women. They have no idea that men can suffer, that men are people too. I don't know that the left, even the white knight characters understand that, hey, you know, there's more than just women you know men have issues too and again you know this is one of those things that the media isn't here on for for this you know they're too busy pushing their narrative on on certain things that everybody needs to be able to come into the country uh that no one's allowed to own a firearm you know so on and so forth and this society in which you know nothing can really be talked about or nothing can really be discussed is a little bit you know toxic i want to say what what happens in a world where we completely disregard men's issues or, or struggles that men are having well i'll tell you what we have a complete societal breakdown i spoke about this before you know we need men men are needed they're absolutely vital to our society um, as much as the left doesn't want to acknowledge that. And it's really tragic to see that in a time where we can actually recognize and see, hey, you know, men are making a lot less than women. Maybe this gender pay gap thing that we brought up isn't necessarily true. And when the time comes that we start to see that you know that the gender wage gap isn't real that um we turn around and say all right let's help the men no because it's not cool you know it's not cool it's not hip it's not what all the guys and great gals out there are talking about so no one cares about men's issues and you know when you and when it, it and whenever anybody ever tries to bring it up in the media it gets immediately pushed down and you know we talked about this too where the question isn't um you know what can we do to help men the question is or the the the, the response is yeah but women are suffering because of that and so it's really uh the women who are really losing here no man come on i mean if you want to help one side that's fine but let's not leave the other side out to pasture. You know, people love to say that um, women uh, women are better than men. I mean, that's really what they're saying. They're, they're not into equality, really. Um, when, they, when they're saying that women are better than men, you know, at first I thought it was a joke, like, when I was younger. And so I kind of, like, was like, whatever, you know, it's fine. But these, no, they're serious. You know, they really think that um, men are disposable. And, you know, that's that really sucks. You know, that's really not, not a good thing. And, you know, I said this before, I'll say it again. Listen, I really don't think that women are oppressed. I mean, are there, like, like as a class, and I definitely don't think that they felt surprised um, oppressed as a class in the 1950s. Um, I think women really cherished their roles as mothers. I think they really enjoyed the opportunity to 
take care of children, you know, and, and be the really important vital figure who instilled family values, who instilled important values in their children as they grew up. And I think that women realized that that opportunity, having that ability to be able to do that is extraordinarily uh, valuable to society. And, you know, that giving that up and for what to make a couple more bucks to to feel that you know you have your own income and you can therefore go and do what exactly chase your dreams and do stuff like that for a lot of women having a kid giving life raising life is their dream and rightly so that's not to say that that's the only dream women have. I mean, there's certainly women out there who prefer not to have children and that's fine. No one's saying that they have to or that they have to be stay at home moms. But what's, what's happened is that when this kind of push for women's independence, when women have proven to be happier in general, staying at home and raising the children than, than going out and doing anything else because it's fulfilling and you know, they, they feel like they have a place where they can really have big impact, big change. Um, you know, when you take that and you replace that central maternity with, you know, a masculine role of, of making money, of being the breadwinner, who's raising the children? We're leaving the raising of the children to the state and a state that's not even good at its job. And that's really the problem here. And and so the values that you want to teach your kids, um, the things you want to you know protect your kids from, all of a sudden both parents are working. No one's home to do that. Your kids get raised by YouTube. They get raised by Fortnite. They get raised by God only knows what, what what's being taught in the schools. And a lot of what is being taught in the schools, like LGBTQ, etc., um, the parents are being forced to have their kids learn that because it's being pushed as as you know you know schools are indoctrination centers you know they've always been that um one of the safeguards that we've had against that was the fact that well the mother would be home with the kids and yeah look can the father stay home the father can stay home but he's just better situated to be out there as the woman uh, hormonally is better situated to be at home you know that's not a taboo thing to say that's not a um, any of these words that they'd use, that's how it is, man. You know, if the facts are offensive, I'm s sorry, but facts are, that's what they, that's what a fact is. Um, women are better suited for different, for, for different things than men are. That's not controversial, really. Um, that's just a general thing. That's obviously true. I mean, you talk to any individual who's not, you know, hyper socialist. You know, it's true. Like, it's, you know, so that there are differences. Someone's taller, someone's shorter, someone uh, is prettier, someone's uglier, I guess. Um, you know, and, and they're, they're real differences, you know, and no one is actually really going to challenge that. I mean, you know, um, so I think the thing is, is that you know, men as a whole really need help i think there's really a crisis um of men not having a sense of purpose finding a reason to really be here um and i think a part of that really has to do with you know technological advancements yes i mean we do live in a, you know in western societies in one of the richest places for sure for anybody to live in the best possible conditions, some of the best pos possible conditions for anyone to ever live in. And that is absolutely a wonderful boon, you know, that we can point to and say, yes, you know, that's awesome. Like we did it, we're doing it and everything's fantastic. Yes, for sure. We can say that. Um, but at the same time, you know, while women are doing so much better, you know, who's really suffering the family and you know, we have to call it out for what it is. Um, the left, I think, really thought that with a lot of these progressive pushes, you know, giving LGBTQ the right to right to for gay marriage, um, allowing, you know, 
certain other things, you know, promulgating transgenderism, for example, um, opening the borders up to, you know, certain people who don't exactly belong here, um, so on and so forth. Um, I think that's created real long lasting problems that we don't realize, you know, women uh, going into the workforce in mass. Um, these things that we would have traditionally hailed as, um, you know, being great have had some serious implications as things have played out. Um, and one of those implications we're starting to see now in the studies and the research that there's a whole slew class of men out there now, um, whose viable partners are women who make more than they do and a lot of the time the well the women aren't attracted to that they want to be with a man who at least makes as much as she does and because you know we've created a society that's devalued marriage that's devalued so many things um it's becoming very hard for families to form and a part of that, you know, we have to look ourselves in the mirror and say that we did this in the auspice of creating, um, you know, f more rights, freer rights. And so that that's really where my my uh, my I forgot the expression. Uh, that's really where my issue is. You know, the fact that we changed into institutions um promoted certain behaviors that are proving to be the detriment of a healthy society how do we know that because families aren't forming families are failing in mass people are um having kids out of wedlock single single parent ho uh homes are exploding and the effects of single single family homes are at extraordinary crime rate we have people who are being born, people who are coming in, creating all sorts of chaos, all sorts of issues, and no one wants to look at it for what it is. And I'll tell you what it is. A lot of this progressive policy is bad. It doesn't work. It has been chipping away at the fabric of our society. It's indecent. Um, a society that isn't based i'll tell you why christians exist i'll tell you why um america worked so well decades ago because when things were based on traditional values christian judeo values you had strong communities people who are involved with one another neighbors that spoke to one another because they all shared the same values they valued human life they valued doing the right thing they valued the, the structure of the family, that everybody was under the auspice of the man. And that was normal. And because that structure was there, the kids were properly raised to a degree. Of course, he still had issues. Look, was there domestic violence? Yes, there was domestic violence. Was it bad? Of course, domestic violence is bad. Yes, that's bad. However, there is a level of structure that we got not justifying domestic violence domestic violence is bad but i'm saying that it wasn't um domestic violence wasn't in every household and you know that that's that's a completely separate issue what i'm trying to say is is that when we had a structured family home the children had a place to be they had a place to experience growing up they had um you know, all of these things that you wouldn't have in a traditional family home, you know, the, the courts recognized that the father was the was the, the, the head of the household. And that helped the family in more ways than it destroyed it, because that allowed, you know, some semblance of, of sanity, of stability in the house that we just don't have anymore. You know, we cannot. It's like people don't think through why we had certain policies in the first place you know no one said that the man should be the head of the house specifically to oppress other people of course not that sounds that just sounds dumb um no man it was there because god ordained it because god 
wanted a stable structure. He, he, he designed a, a perfect family unit to be a certain way. And of course, then when you go in and you try to change that and try to shift it, you create this, this uh, perversion of it and that it falls apart. And it is falling apart right before our eyes. You know, our society is, is, is so close, like so on its way to just completely collapsing. You know, there's a scientist recently who came out and said, you know, if we're going to combat climate change, you know what we need to do? We need to encourage cannibalism. What? But when you live in a country without God, why isn't cannibalism a good thing? You know, what's wrong with cannibalism? Really nothing. You know, and, and one of the arguments that uh, Tim Poole likes to make is he says, well, well, you know, that's not really the issue. The reason we don't do that is because, you know, you wouldn't want someone else to do it. So that's why you don't do it to them because you don't want them to do it to you. It's like, well, no, not really, because um, I don't think that that's a sufficient argument to, like, stop people from doing it still. You know, a lot of people out there wouldn't want certain things to happen to them, but they're totally OK with doing it to other people. You know, it's not, this isn't like this, this, this one different factor, this one different, let me put it to you this way, go to another country, right? Go to, go to a third world country, go to, you know, Guatemala, El Salvador, any of those countries. If you, if you take away the rule of law, oh, people will go crazy. People will go nuts, domestic violence out. People have no problem killing other people. You know, they band together, they form tribes of that. That would absolutely happen. What brings, what keeps the rule of law besides the police um is a stable society a society that's based and has a shared set of values you know diversity is dangerous i think for a stable society because it encourages more disagreement it it, it that's what it does when you have cultural diversity it encourages disagreement it encourages um disagreeability um and all of these kind of what can be nasty um, interactions, you know? And so what you have is you have pockets, you have like tribes form in different areas. Like you go to New York City, you have, uh, you know, Spanish Harlem, you have uh, Little Italy, you have K-Town, you have all these places where people with the same culture kind of go together because they their values are somewhat aligned. You know, they have shared cultural backgrounds. They That is what allows them to be strong together. And so I think a monoculture is definitely the strongest thing. And see, this is a lot of what you get out of the left. I mean, what they say is in good spirits, in the way of compassion, but they, in their path of, you know, trying to make everything fair and equal, they don't recognize what evil really is. Because in order for everything to be equal, nothing can be evil and so to them you know eating a person isn't the worst thing in the world you know to them doing all of these evil nasty things are not necessarily bad and that's i think that the, the the real problem with the left is is that they see everything as a compassion thing that you know no one could really do any wrong you know we need to all band together and have you know sing kumbaya but human nature is not like that man you know there are people who will do things just just because they can you know and, and there are people who are really bad people who do do really bad things you know and we do need to call them out for that and you know while we'd like to say bring everybody into the country that um wants to be here because we want to show so much compassion we 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 have to we we have limited resources that's a fact and if we don't take care of our homes, if we don't take care of our livelihoods, we wouldn't even be there tomorrow to take care of these people. So I think the priorities are all mixed up. The compassion's there for sure. And that's great, right? And we need compassion, but um, th there's some level of a disconnect. There's some level of um, we can't be everything for everybody. Not everything can be equal. It's just not how it is. And so if we take away God and we say, oh, but to show compassion, you know, let's allow uh, and, and push, you know, LGBT, let's let LGBT be a thing. Well, the reason Christians are against it and the reason that, you know, it's it's not a thing in the Bible 
is because allowing it's not because there's hatred there's no hatred there's no hatred for someone because of an orientation absolutely not no what there is um you know the, the reason that social stigma is there is because lgbtq is anti-family you know when you encourage kids to do things outside of you know traditional what a traditional family would be you don't get families man um you get a breakdown and when you get that breakdown and if this is okay you know the, you well you're already out of god who's to say you can't be any of the other 20 genders or you can't be um or you, or you can't do certain other things you know why you, you when you stop valuing life as being important when you stop valuing the family when you stop valuing uh familial bonds relationships um you know when you when you stop valuing uh people for what the bible describes them to be is that every person is valuable and important and matters and um you know and, and a person has a right to choose what, what what they would like to do uh with their lives you know and things like that um you we're going to end up with a society where kind of like what we have now we don't have strong families we don't have people who feel like they can really even speak about these things you know even me making comments about lgbtq i wonder oh is facebook gonna uh facebook is youtube gonna not allow this video because i said something negative about it you see what i mean where it becomes like this this thought police um taking you out for anything that you say you know and it's like no that's like really authoritarian and that's like not good and people are smart enough to be able to come to the conclusion themselves about what they want to believe and what they think is okay and what they think is good um and if we decide to be the arbiters of well this is good but but, but that's bad and, and this is fine but that really isn't fine then you know what what is left from a perspective of you know a christian what's, what's what's left from a perspective of stability because if we continue down this path cannibalism is going to totally be okay you know um people are going to flood through the country the country will change as we know it and that's not a hatred towards aliens no it's just a fact man if you have a huge influx of people from a different culture you lose your culture that's not a hatred towards anybody no that's a valuing of what you already have and if valuing what you already have is hatred over something else then we have different definitions of what that word means okay hatred to me to to most people means like a strong not love like a strong not love to somebody or to a group like where like where you want harm to be incurred by them you know and and an act of that is you actively damaging you yourself directly actively damaging that person or group okay by us turning people away at the border that's not us doing that all right people have different um definitions the, the the left has its own definitions for everything that are wild um compared to the rest of the world but you know and this is what they hide with the social media i think that a lot of people really are staunch staunchly against all this stuff man and and, and if you want to know um you want to get one indicator look at how many people go to these rallies that the president has you know people will will get in line two days before he shows up to make sure that they have a great seat at that stadium so that they might be have a chance of interacting with him there people really go nuts man and you never would see this kind of thing um you know during most presidencies he fills stadiums man this guy fills big arenas and that says something people are see the message they see that he's not fake they see that he's really talking to them and he really cares you know and he's really doing some of the things that he said he would do certainly more than anybody else does and when the media ever goes after somebody um and shows how much vitriol they have for that person then i start to like him because if he's anti-establishment 
and I know how bad the establishment has been. I'm a hundred percent for this guy. Let's do it. You know, let's do it because anything else at this point would be fantastic. It would be great. I'm a hundred percent behind it. Let's do it. Um, things have got to change. You know, they, they, we, we can't go, we can't, we can't, we just can't go down this route. You know, we can't keep going down this route. It's not going to work out. It's not going to be good for us. So, you know, uh, but it, anyway, guys, that's it. Um, we'll end this episode here. If you guys liked the episode, um, share it with your friends. It's the best way to, um, help spread the word, spread the message. YouTube isn't going to help us. So your best bet for getting the news out there. Really? Um, if you don't want to, that's totally fine. That's, I mean, you know, live your life. I don't know why you watch the whole thing, but all right. Um, any, anyway, any kind of like, any kind of engagement, leave a message, leave anything like that. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Peace.